Orlando, Florida is home to some of the most famous amusement parks in the world, but it is also home to a small amusement park called Fun Spot America Orlando. Today, I'm going to dive into the details of this park and review it. Fun Spot Orlando opened on Christmas Eve of 1997 as Fun Spot Action Park. The park opened with go-karts and a Ferris wheel. They then started to add amusement rides. They grew into a nice little park with three roller coasters, 13 rides, four go-kart tracks, and the world's tallest sky coaster. In 2011, the park announced they would be adding a small water park with slides by Splash Tacular. This never came to be, and Gator Spot would be built on part of the site that would be home to the water park park. In 2013, the park would get its largest expansion. This 15-acre expansion would include three roller coasters, the Sky Coaster, and a new entrance building which was supposed to have a Ferris wheel on top. While that never happened, the footers were supposedly poured for the wheel. Fun Spot is free to enter. After entry, you can either pay per ride or purchase an all-day wristband. Wristbands were $45 the day we went. The thrill rides and coasters cost $12 per person per ride if you pay by ride. The kitty rides and kitty coaster are $7 per person per ride. You will most likely want a marathon white lightning and some of the other thrill rides, so if you do, the wristband is going to be your best bet. Before I get into the ride lineup, a few things to note. I did not ride the Sky Coaster or most of the flat rides. I was only able to do one go-kart track. Let's get into the rides now. The star is undoubtedly White Lightning. This GCI Wood Coaster is one of those coasters included in the 2013 expansion. And as of 2022, this coaster is still running great. I go more in depth in a separate review, but this coaster has everything that I look for in a wood coaster. Airtime, laterals, and just a little bit of roughness. My second favorite ride was Freedom Flyer. This Vacoma Family Suspended Coaster is the 395 meter model, the same as Kavastin at Groneland. But this coaster has smooth track work and super free and comfy lap bars. The only thing that can be uncomfortable is that there is no final block break, so the train slams to a stop when it enters the station. The flat rides I rode were also pretty good. The Scrambler was the highlight. This Eli Bridge model provided the usual great laterals, but also ran a long cycle. The Fun Slide is also really good. It provided better ejector airtime than Maverick and is undoubtedly my favorite Fun Slide. Some other rides include Hot Seat, an SNS Scream and Swing relocated from Wild Adventures, Rip Curl, a Wisdom Rides Music Express, Enterprise, a Schwarzkopf Enterprise relocated from Six Flags Over Georgia where it was known as Wheelie, and Headrush 360, an SBF Visa inverting Frisbee. I only rode one go-kart track, the Commander track. But this is my favorite track that I've been on. It has a lot of tight turns and dips with better go-karts than I'm used to. It also ran for 12 minutes. So would I recommend visiting Fun Spot Orlando? Absolutely. It's worth coming for White Lightning alone. The other rides are also very good. The park closes at midnight most days, so it's a perfect stop after SeaWorld Orlando or Universal Studios Orlando. And with that, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please consider liking and subscribing as there will be a lot more roller coaster, amusement parks, and aviation content here on Michigan Coasters. SLC you in the next one.